Over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a bizarre controversy involving West Virginia in the 1980s. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. One month ago, in front of a national television audience, the Dallas Cowboys played the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday Night Football. And it was during that game that Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy made one of the most baffling decisions of the entire season, in a season full of baffling decisions. After it was very obvious that C.D. Lamb got a first down on 3rd and 9, but the referees marked it short, McCarthy decided to keep the challenge flag in his pocket, and not challenge the spot, even though it would have been about a 5 second review because of how blatantly obvious it was. Then, on 4th down, McCarthy decides in his own territory to go for it, and to go for it by having his backup quarterback, Cooper Rush, throw a pass, which falls incomplete, resulting in a turnover on downs. Nobody knew what McCarthy was thinking. He was panned after the game for his awful decision-making and logic, and when the Cowboys inevitably lost that game, a ton of the talk was about McCarthy's dumb decision. Heck, it was so bad that I did a video on it immediately after the game, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And you would think that this would be the last time that Mike McCarthy did something insanely dumb and idiotic on fourth down in a big game all season, right? He would learn his lesson and wouldn't repeat the mistake of doing something stupid on third down before going for it on fourth down for an absolutely bizarre reason that didn't make a whole lot of sense. You would think that would be the case, right? Well, oh no. Oh, how wrong you would be. Because I know it's an easy target. I know a lot of people are bashing the decision that Mike McCarthy made during this game right here against the Green Bay Packers yesterday. Now, I could play contrarian and say that this was the right call and that people are overreacting and that this whole sequence might not be as bad as you think, but I'm not going to do that because it truly was that awful and single-handedly cost the Cowboys the game. Because we need to talk about whatever the heck Mike McCarthy was thinking at the Frozen Tundra. For those who aren't watching this in the immediate aftermath of the game, here's a brief recap of how we got to this point. I'm going to keep it as brief as possible because this game was certifiably nuts and was one of the top three games of the entire year. It's November 13th, 2022. It's week 10 of the NFL season, and we have a big game in the NFC between the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers. This is a big game for both of these teams. The Packers need to win to have any shot at keeping their season alive and potentially making a playoff push, while the Cowboys need to win if they want to keep pace with the Philadelphia Eagles for first place in the NFC East. And things were looking great for the Cowboys entering the fourth quarter, as they were taking advantage of some big Green Bay mistakes and were leading at 28-14. In the over 60-year history of the franchise, including the playoffs, the Cowboys were a whopping 195-0 when leading by 14 points entering the fourth quarter which seems insane to believe. Translation, it seemed like it was going to take an absolute miracle for the Packers to come back from this deficit. But sure enough, they did, as thanks to two touchdown catches by rookie wideout Christian Watson, who had a breakout game that was long overdue, the two teams were tied at 28 apiece. And this meant that we were heading for overtime. Seems fitting that we had another classic on our hands between these two storied rivals. The Cowboys won the toss and received, hoping to end the game right then and there with a touchdown. However, even though the drive started off well, as the Cowboys got into Green Bay territory, things went south after the Cowboys got called for holding, which pushed them back to their own 49-yard line and set up 2nd and 19. The good news for the Cowboys was that after a 16-yard passing play by Dak Prescott to Dalton Schultz, it set up 3rd and 3. Yes, the graphics package says that it was 3rd and 4, but the official box score says 3rd and 3, and your own eyes can clearly see that there are only 3 yards from the 35-yard line where the line of scrimmage is to the 32-yard line, which is where they needed to go. The bad news, obviously, is that it is 3rd down, and your backs are kind of against the wall. However, you picked up a good chunk of those yards back and made it 3rd and very manageable. Let's see what you've got drawn up here. Four-man rush. Prescott over the middle. Incomplete. Alexander, great coverage. Okay. 
Well, uh, that's not what I would have done in that situation, but you're still in field goal range. You can send out Brett Maher for a 53-yard field goal, which is by no means a chip shot, but is still in his range. And you can take the lead and force the Packers to drive down the field, or else they lose the game. You can force the Packers' offense to go the length of the field, and wait, wait a second, wait a second, timeout. Why are they going for it? Why are you throwing the ball on third down if you knew it was four down territory this whole time? This isn't real, right? Am I dreaming? What are they doing? Did Mike McCarthy have any foresight whatsoever? Why are you going for it? Prescott in trouble! Throws incomplete! Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. Ah yes, Mike McCarthy. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? This is the first time ever that Akoja has been featured four times on this segment. If it wasn't for the fact that he's making millions of dollars, has a Super Bowl ring, and still has his team in a great spot to make the playoffs, I would almost feel bad for the guy for how many of his decisions I criticize. But come on, this was the lowest hanging fruit I've had in quite some time. Because everything about this sequence was just baffling, and makes you wonder just how good of a head coach Mike McCarthy actually is. So with that being said, let's take a look at why going for it on 4th and 3, when you're in field goal range and it's overtime, is a really bad idea. And I want to emphasize this. I know what the win probability odds say, and how it was really a toss-up. The actual decision to go for it? I can defend it. A 52-yard field goal, especially in cold weather, is not a chip shot. The odds of getting a 52-yard field goal versus the odds of picking up three yards is pretty close. Personally, I would have kicked it. Maher has a cannon of a leg, as shown from his three made field goals from 62 plus yards. He's seven for eight lifetime from that 50 to 52 yard range. And even if you go for it to keep the drive alive, you're still pretty far away from the end zone. So it's not like you're guaranteed or even close to guaranteed to get the result that you're longing for. Plus, if you go for it, you get it, and then you kick the field goal, there's a very good chance that if Green Bay goes down and kicks a field goal, that you're not going to have enough time to mount a second drive, and this will end in a tie. Versus if you kick the field goal now, and Green Bay has two more minutes to work with on their drive, which could give you more time down the road. However, I get the decision in that regard. I'm not calling for Mike McCarthy's head over this isolated incident of kicking. Now, if I was going to go for it here, I would have intentionally sent the kicking unit out and called timeout, then brought the offense back out there, a la what Mike Vrabel did with the Titans in 2018 against the Eagles, to make the defense feel like their job is done, only for them to have to go back out there. But again, for this isolated incident, I am not criticizing McCarthy. Having said that, does Mike McCarthy have any foresight whatsoever? The great coaches in this league think plays and plays ahead, and are very strategic. McCarthy can't even think one play ahead. There was nothing that happened on third down that should have changed your decision. You didn't gain any yards. You didn't lose any yards. Your line of scrimmage stayed exactly the same. And this meant that you should have known exactly what you were going to do on fourth down if you didn't pick up any yards. So if you knew from the start that this was four down territory, and you knew that you were going to be going for it on fourth down if you didn't pick up any yards here, then why the heck didn't you run the ball on third down? Why are you calling a passing play? And better yet, why are you calling a passing play where two guys are running to the exact same spot over the middle of the field, meaning that a defender will be there? Your running game was crushing it all day. On the day, the Cowboys averaged a whopping 5.1 yards per carry picking up 159 yards on 31 carries. And that gets even better when we take out Dak Prescott's runs. If we just count runs given to running backs, so we're only counting Tony Pollard's runs and Malik Davis's runs, 
then the Cowboys had 27 carries for 153 yards, averaging 5.7 yards per carry. Tony Pollard was averaging 5.2, and Malik Davis was averaging 7.6, and none of those numbers or averages are inflated by one long run, like a 60-yarder that makes things look way better than they actually were. Take out Pollard's longest run of 14 yards, and he's still averaging 4.8 yards per carry on the day. And take out Davis' longest run of 17 yards, and he's still averaging 5.3 yards per carry. In other words, the Cowboys were insanely consistent on the ground, and the Packers could not stop it whatsoever, as you can see from these highlights. And this was especially true in the second half of the game. From the midway point of their first drive of the second half, until this point in overtime, the Cowboys had 11 carries and were averaging over 7.5 yards per carry. That is domination. And of the 31 carries that the Cowboys had, they got positive yardage on 30 of them and lost yards on none of them. Not a single run was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. If the Cowboys ran the ball, they got at least one yard just about every single time. And if we're just counting runs by running backs, there was not one two-play sequence during the game where the Cowboys did not pick up at least three yards on two carries. In other words, you can take a run by Davis or Pollard, then take the next run by Davis or Pollard, and in any combination throughout the game, you're guaranteed at least three yards. The absolute worst-case scenario if you run the ball, based on history from the other 30-some-odd times you ran it, is that you're right back where you started. You went away from a winning formula that the Packers couldn't stop for no reason whatsoever, and it cost you big time. Again, if the Cowboys had 3rd and 10, got 7 yards on a passing play, and that brought up 4th and 3, and they went for it instead of kicking, I wouldn't agree with it, but there's no way I'm bashing that decision. It's the fact that you had 2 plays to go 3 yards, your running game was playing lights out, and you just opted not to use it because you had no foresight whatsoever. Mike McCarthy showed with this that he is the guy who plays Monopoly. His opponent has houses on the greens and the blues. He's on the yellows. He has a Monopoly on the light blues, but his opponents are at the pinks and the oranges, so they're nowhere near him. And he decides to buy houses right now on his light blues, completely lacking all foresight, knowing that he's about to face Murderer's Row. That's what this was like. And the fact that after the game, McCarthy said that he was thinking touchdown the whole way on that drive and was thinking as early as second down about this being four down territory either shows that he is god awful at foresight and planning, doesn't trust his run game for some reason, which I'm not sure why, or he just doesn't know what he's doing. So what do we learn from all this? If you're in four down territory and you know that you're in four down territory, then act like you're in four down territory. If you're in a short yardage situation with two plays to get a minimal amount of yardage, and you have a running game that cannot be stopped, and has no negative plays all day, then use it! Play to your strengths! Don't be afraid to think a few plays ahead! That's a completely necessary skill for a coach to have! If you're gonna call a passing play, don't call a play where two guys are running to the exact same spot! And in all honesty, based on the last two years, if you're Mike McCarthy, Whatever your gut is telling you that you should do is probably wrong, and you should probably act like George Costanza and do the opposite of what you were going to call in those types of situations. Because holy cow, you are so bad at this. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.